A big hello and a very warm welcome to Brand Equity. And today we have a special showing. I am sitting with the president of AB InBev India. And uh, let me tell you, for the uninitiated, AB InBev is the world's largest beer company. Uh, of course, if I ask the employees themselves, they'd be humble enough to say leading. But uh, it is the world's largest beer company, Karthik. We're proud to be associated with the category. We're proud to lead the category. And we're very proud that beer is well and thriving. And yes, we wouldn't mind the largest beer category uh, way to be introduced as well. But lovely to have you on the show, Kartikeya Sharma. Uh, I believe you've taken on the reins of, of the India operations just in 2020. What an opportune time to take on a company, I would say. To be put mildly, it was baptism by fire. Sure. I, I don't think any of us prepare for a pandemic at the scale at which it played out. Uh, but suffice to say, uh, we're very, very pleased that the pandemic is behind us. We're very pleased that our company showed the resilience it did. And we're very pleased that our employees are safe and sound. Uh, and AB InBev is emerging from this pandemic a lot stronger than we did going into it. Sure. Uh, but, you know, just for the uninitiated and my own uh, understanding. If you can take me through AB InBev's journey in India uh, and where are you at today? Well, uh, we're very proud of uh, the heritage we have, uh, more specifically speaking here in India. Uh, it was effectively two different companies, uh, SAB Miller uh, that had entered India uh, almost two decades ago, two decades and a half, uh, through a variety of combinations and some own brand launches. Uh, InBev, on the other hand, entered uh, through a joint venture uh, with a local partner. Uh, we acquired Anheuser Busch globally to become AB InBev in India as well. Uh, and late 2016, early 2017, uh, owing to a global acquisition of SAB Miller, we combined operations between AB InBev and SAB Miller to become AB InBev. So that's been the journey. 2017 onwards, uh, it is one company with an amazing portfolio of complementary brands. Uh, and a very balanced supply footprint that has enabled us to truly really take the beer industry from one level to another, as well as our leadership within this category. Sure. So let me just understand the beer journey in India. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but is it true that uh, in terms of beer penetration in India, we stand only at 15%? Indeed. Amongst uh, the major economies, uh, beer uh, in India is terribly underpenetrated. Uh, we haven't had any other market that can come close to this level of underrepresentation on the category. Uh, we're, however, more focused as we look to the future. Sure. We think India's demographic advantage of an extremely young population, one that believes in socializing, uh, getting together, uh, will find themselves gravitating towards Bayer, as we do see Bayer being one of the fastest growing categories over the last five years. And we think the future for Bayer in India is extremely bright. Uh, India today uh, is not even in the top 15 bear markets. Uh, but Where our own, are we in terms of that standing? Uh, well, so the total bear category uh, is south of uh, the top markets in the world, south of 15. Uh, we're certainly in the top 20 markets. Uh, but if you look at India's size and if you look at many other categories, you know this is not a fair representation of where the bear category can be. Uh, and we as AB InBev uh, have a very simple strategy, that is to lead and grow the category. Uh, we're not satisfied leading a category that isn't growing. We're going to be pleased if you're leading a category that is growing and thriving. And that's exactly what we're seeing over the last five years, pre-COVID and coming out of COVID. Uh, we're finding uh, certain trends as far as consumer trends are concerned, uh, be it the involvement of women in the category, be it more and more urbanization playing into people wanting to socialize, uh, and moderate forms of alcohol are finding themselves to be more endearing to consumers because it allows for interactions to last longer uh, and for Instagram pictures to look better. So we actually see India coming through as one of the top 10 markets uh, within the beer category over the next seven to eight years. Okay, so this decade you're saying will be for beer? We believe this decade is India's decade uh, as far as not just the economy is concerned, and we know the economy is doing quite well, uh, but also the beer category for the reasons I've cited. But what's the trigger for a beer not coming up in terms of, you know, actually a, a cultural consumption moment so far? Well, uh, it's been something that has ailed the category for the better part of its entire existence. Uh, Bear relative to spirits, and this really, Sonali, in many ways is the reason 
the category penetration is as low as it is, uh, is taxed disproportionately higher uh, than many other available popular spirits. Uh, and this disproportionate taxation on beer, uh, for all practical purposes, puts beer out of reach for a wide percentage of the population. Okay. Uh, and when you have accessibility as being a fundamental challenge, I think category growth suffers right at the start. Uh, we're seeing some green shoots uh, in some parts of India where taxes are starting to normalize between extremely high ABV spirits, largely brown spirits and beer. And the moment we see this normalization where taxes from spirits to beer are equal, uh, we actually see disproportionate growth on beer, which speaks to the idea that consumption uh, from a consumer standpoint is certainly not a challenge. It's more the accessibility or the lack of accessibility that is causing consumers to not gravitate towards beer but other spirits. And this can't possibly be good for a country as young as ours. Uh, and so we really are on a mission to advocate for more states to reduce this gulf sure. between taxes. A great point, Katya. But that brings me to my point saying for um, all these decades, has there been no formidable uh, player in the beer category to have possibly advocated this for long enough for this change to have already come in? Well, I do see the last two decades and particularly uh, the first half of the 21st century, so this is the period from 2000 to 2010, really being a lost decade for beer. Uh, this is the period where uh, there was hardly any innovation. This was the period where uh, the gulf on taxes between spirits and beer actually grew. Uh, and beer became even more out of pocket compared to spirits which thrived during this period. If you look at the previous decade, and this is now 2011 through to basically pre-COVID, uh, we actually saw a lot more happen on the innovation side. Uh, we'd humbly concede uh, that our journey in India was almost underpinned by innovations. We looked at the introduction of brands like Corona, brands like Who Garden, uh, brands like Budweiser. We had one of the most successful innovations seen on the Budweiser brand the world over take place here in India with Budweiser Magnum. And when we saw those innovations play out, uh, we also saw the tailwinds come through with an improvement uh, thanks to the advocacy efforts that we were quite focused on uh, to work with the government to improve the tax differentiation between spirits and beer. Uh, if you look at the first half, which is the period from 2000 to 2010, and you look at the period from 2011 to 20, you would really see the emergence of a premium segment that did not exist. Mm -hmm. Uh, this premium segment we very proudly lead today, but more importantly, the category growth in the last 10 years is a lot more satisfying than it was in the previous 10 years. Uh, this also gives us reason to believe that we want to continue to engage with governments across India. Uh, alcohol, as you know, is a state, state level issue, subject. Yeah. And we find many, many partners in the state governments across India who are willing to sit and talk about what needs to be done to make bear more accessible. So we're quite optimistic that the next 10 years uh, we'll see the bear category grow at an even faster clip than the last 10. But just to play devil's advocate, if the regulatory framework uh, is so complex, especially because, you know, it's, it, it's not a federal issue, it, it, it's a state subject, and so there are so many stakeholders, why would companies such as yourselves, which have much brighter, greener markets, especially when one talks of beer, want to look at India? It's not an easy question to answer. Uh, I think we have been in India now for the better part of the last two decades. Uh, and we're not here only because of the shiny numbers that speak to a very large population and speak to the opportunity that India has always promised. I, I think we're quite uh, realistic about the idea that when you have this kind of regulation, uh, effectively in alcohol, you don't have one country, but you have 28 countries. Absolutely. If you think about the level of regulation and where uh, alcohol and alcohol policies are really decided, which is at a state level. Uh, what gives us belief uh, when we look at the kind of opportunities India has is actually the evolution in the thinking of the bureaucracy uh, and the idea that they understand what's right for the citizenry. Uh, and an example of that is West Bengal, an example where we have seen uh, the state actually reduce taxes on beer relative to spirits, uh, which has not just seen growth in a more moderate form of uh, alcohol beverages like beer, substantial growth, but has also seen uh, the total state exchequer see its revenues grow up by 40%. Have you been a country that has been beer loving naturally or is that something that needs effort, education and awareness uh, to know? 
look at this category growing? It's, it's actually all three of them, Sonali. Uh, if you think about the opportunity we see every time Bayer is made more accessible, uh, I think it drives home the point that the need for the category is there. The consumption demand, if I can call it that, is there. Uh, the difference between consumption demand and consumption being met uh, is the out-of-pocket owing to the very high tax structure that Bayer as a category goes through. But if you also look at the second and third point you made, uh, we have increasingly almost every year uh, the trend of urbanization, socialization and mixed gender social occasions uh, taking on a level of pace that almost makes the previous year look silly. Uh, by that I mean participation of women in the category, by that I mean the number of amazing on-trade venues that are coming up, and by that I mean the kind of migration we are seeing into tier one urban centers or tier two urban centers. Uh, if only we could find the first barrier which is accessibility addressed, mm. uh, you'll almost find one, two and three that is price accessibility, urbanization and socialization along with mixed gender socialization kicking in to make bear category almost an unstoppable category over the next 10 years. As more and more women users and women consumers come in, there's also a fight within, uh, not within the category but in, in different categories as you know wine is being pushed, gin is being pushed mm -hmm. and you have beer. How does beer compete with these other new entrants relatively new in India? Uh, which are trying to get in, you know, uh, new users and, of course, uh, female users? Well, it's a good question. I think India of today uh, is a lot more connected owing to the prevalence of social media. So they know what their peers are drinking all over the world. And the right to passage, if you pick any country of significance, is almost always in that period from when you turn legal drinking age, which differs from country to country, uh, till your mid-30s, is almost always moderate forms of alcohol. This is beer. Uh, more recently, we are seeing the emergence of seltzers, uh, what we call near beer categories. They're cold, very moderate, 3, 4, 5 percent ABV products. Uh, and the reason for that is young people want to socialize and socialize longer. Uh, you also spoke about some of the other new categories coming through, and I yeah. know you spoke specifically to gin. Our understanding of categories like gin is the interaction is more from spirits drinkers who are already in the spirit space. So if there's somebody drinking rum, there's somebody drinking vodka, whiskey, uh, because fundamentally our assessment is many of these drinkers have also gotten quite acclimatized to the higher percentage of ABV. Uh, but our focus continues to be squarely on beer and we're excited about what's happening in the world of beer. Your premium category, I would say Budweiser is your star performer, even in India, I believe it's become uh, the fourth largest market uh, for the world for Budweiser. Uh, how, how would you critique Budweiser in India's performance, uh, you know, in terms of uh, where it ranks with its peers? Well, so Budweiser has just been uh, a blessing to our business. Uh, we, uh, we, we saw Budweiser enter India in 2007 uh, at a time where there was no premium segment in India. Uh, today the premium segment, uh, our estimates put it at uh, closer to 15% uh, exiting this year. Uh, of the total industry and we're very proud as AB InBev uh, that we lead uh, with a 67% share of the segment. In the, in the premium category? Within the premium segment. Within the premium segment. Uh, okay. And almost entirely with Budweiser but also one of Budweiser's uh, very popular innovation which is Budweiser Magnum which is an India exclusive innovation. Okay. Uh, the reason for Budweiser's success can almost entirely be attributed to the idea that it has endeared itself with an extremely sessionable liquid. Uh, it's easy on the palate. Uh, we've all grown up uh, looking at the Budweiser ad films, but we also know uh, that we could not have thought of any pivotal moment in pop culture over the last hundred years and not seen Budweiser being a part of it. So it's, it's an icon within the world of alcohol beverages. And I think what we've been able to do uh, with Budweiser here in India is to have a simple, repeatable strategy of focusing on our consumers and almost entirely uh, giving them the latest and the greatest from the world of culture, which for us is music and sports. Uh, couple that with innovations like Magnum, which have allowed for the changing or evolving liquid preferences to also be met. For example, people are looking at fuller bodied, higher ABV, extremely smooth uh, uh, beverages, unlike strong beers in India that used to all be about the functional kick. Uh, Magnum today uh, has almost become the epitome that you can have a functional need of higher ABV being met 
uh, with an extremely smooth, fuller-bodied uh, palette that, that Budweiser Magnum delivers to. And then if I go a little deeper in Who Garden, uh, or for that matter, Corona, we're very proud when we get our consumer reads that 55% of all consumption on Who Garden are actually women drinkers. Uh, and we were so encouraged with the trend of women joining uh, beer in such a large measure, because Who Garden is not a small brand in India, is we introduced innovations like Who Garden Nectarine, uh, which is a peach-flavored beer, and Who Garden Rosé, uh, which is a raspberry-flavored beer, uh, that has allowed women participation to increase even more. Uh, and ditto on Corona. We see Corona almost being a 50-50 men-women endorsed beer, and this gives us a lot of confidence about what premium and super premium can really become in India. We think the 15% mix of premium in India could well and truly continue to see extremely significant growth relative to total industry. And we're very happy that we're well positioned within this segment. Okay. Uh, so if I look at your, uh, your entire uh, portfolio, what is the kind of contribution you're having from your premium portfolio and from your premium, mass and, and, and super premium? Well, so premium and super premium put together is close You're to... clubbing that? We're, we're clubbing that okay. uh, as what we call our high-end portfolio or premium portfolio. Uh, so that represents about 58% of our volume, uh, close to 65% of our top line. Uh, and our below premium portfolio that constitutes uh, many of our core brands that we've inherited uh, yeah. through our combination with SAB Miller, sure. uh, that represents about 42% of volume, uh, but close to 35% of our top line. So we see uh, the premium mix of our business growing in a very healthy way. Uh, we see our leadership of this category uh, continuing to strengthen. Uh, and we also see the mix of this premium segment in the industry continuing to grow at a very fast clip. Uh, so, you know, given what you just said, uh, would, I, would I be right to assume that the future trajectory of AB InBev in India will be its play on premiumization? Uh, and not so much mass, because uh, that's where the game is. I think that would be a very good summary of our commercial strategy in India. Uh, we could not be more convinced that our strategy that, that has gone back now to a decade and a half to bet on premiumization in India has paid off. Uh, and with all the humility at my disposal, I think we haven't even scratched the surface on the kind of upside for growth uh, the premium segment in India can see. You know, how would you assess your performance uh, for the first half of 2023? And I want you to juxtapose that performance, let's say vis-a-vis -vis 2019, because that was at our last normal year. You know, you could also, yes. you, 2019, 2022, and 2023. Yeah, we, we look at our business cuts in the same way. Uh, so Jan to June, H1 of this year, if we reflect on our performance versus last year, uh, we put the industry growth at about 20%. Uh, we put our own growth uh, to almost 40 to 50 percent ahead of industry for this period, uh, driven almost entirely by Budweiser, Corona, and Hoogarden. So we're very happy with the mix that is driving this growth. But obviously, uh, Budweiser being your star. Uh, with Budweiser being the breakaway star. Uh, but Corona, Hoogarden, on a small base notwithstanding, uh, is growing at a faster clip than Budweiser, but I'm mindful that it's, it's on a smaller base. Yeah. If I then juxtapose this performance to 2019, uh, we're A, very satisfied that the industry has grown high single digits versus 19, okay. uh, but our growth then versus 19 is significantly higher uh, because our premium mix in 19 during the same period was about 35% on high end within sure. our business. Sure. Today that mix is closer to 58% on volume, 65% on top line. So it's a very different company first half of 2019 to 23. Uh, and all of this is a testament to the idea that coming out of 2022, one thing we were very clear about is we wanted to build a resilient supply chain. We had very little to no challenges with our supply chain. Uh, we had planned ahead, and we're quite confident that this momentum that we've picked up in H1 uh, is going to continue to see itself roll and become even bigger as we go into quarter three and quarter four of this year. Great. Let me move to Jin. Uh, that now that you've launched uh, Who Garden Jin, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, what is why have you launched Jin at a time where we are suddenly seeing? Uh, launches a dime a dozen, especially if, uh, Indian gins that are coming up, uh, you know, from Goa. And uh, there has been a, a burst in a market which is still understanding, uh, you know, the offering. Uh, and B, if you did want to launch it, why did you do it under the aegis of Who Garden and not possibly acquire one of these fledgling brands? It's an interesting question. Uh, uh, 
Uh, for us, we take a great deal of pride that in just about any decision we make in the company, we put the consumer front and center. Uh, our capability, the solution of the label, the brand as you put it, comes much later in the decision making process. Uh, we saw gin as an emerging trend. Uh, and so when we thought about the interplay on what Who Garden means in the minds of consumers, we saw a lot of the key uh, image attributes come up that are remarkably similar to gin. I'm very proud that amongst all our offerings so far, uh, and they're all amazing offerings from Magnum Whiskey uh, to Seven Rivers Rum and now Hugar and Gin, uh, not to mention our partnership with Slab uh, with some more luxury offerings like Diavel. Uh, one of the best received uh, offerings from our Beyond Beer portfolio has been Hugar and Gin. In your vision uh, for AB InBev India, are you looking at it as a beer company or an all beverage company? Because are these innovations that you've that you've done, which is beyond beer, just specifically for the Indian market? I'm assuming yes, right? Well, so first and foremost, 100% uh, of my time and my management team's time and this company's uh, waking efforts go towards fixing what we think is an unnatural anomaly of beer only being 15% of India's total alcohol category. Yeah, of course. Uh, what we have seen as far as consumer needs and capabilities that we had was an opportunity while also looking at brand love and brand power. But our focus disproportionately is Budweiser, Corona, Who Garden, premium brands, the premium segment, and working with the government to advocate for a difference in taxes, a difference in availability from a point of sale, uh, uh, availability of beer not being compared to spirits, and lastly, also ad advocating with the government that, you know, the financial stability of manufacturers, whether it is the inability to take price when we want, whether it is the tremendous amount of working capital pressure, uh, where, if you must know, three times the duty on the selling price of my product is what I pay to the government in advance, which is unique only to the alcohol category. Uh, but I think we're starting to see momentum heading in the right direction. And uh, we want to lead that change, so we're quite confident we'll be able to lead that change. Karthik, last question before I let you go. Do you know, I find AB InBev's strategy to conquer India versus Diageo's strategy to expand and conquer India very different. For instance, let's just talk about whiskey. They launched uh, a global single malt from India. Mm -hmm. You have launched an extension of one of your loved brands, uh, and, ha and launched Magnum Whiskey, mm -hmm. which is not a malt, but a blended whiskey, mm -hmm. right? Uh, two seasoned uh, mm -hmm. players observing the same market. Mm -hmm. Why do you think you, cho you chose this route? Well, our, uh, our beer strategy is based on the success we've seen with what we call our global brand portfolio across many, many markets that mirror India but also markets that to us represent what India could become. Okay. Uh, and you know, it's been a global company bringing the best of its global scale and insight and innovation to play to make India what it is for Budweiser. Sure. I would not want to go so far as to think our consumer insights and our capabilities uh, you know, are a match to some of these companies. What I do know... But you still think it is enough to experiment in the market? We believe that our understanding of our consumers uh, visa we the brands that we have built here, which is Budweiser, Who Garden, sure. in particular, that have spawned innovations uh, from Bear to Beyond Bear, is based on an extremely nuanced view of what those consumers will be willing to do with these brands beyond just the Bear avatar. Uh, so, if we see the success of Budweiser Magnum, the Bear, or now if we see still early days, but the success of Budweiser Magnum, and I should be mindful when I say success because they're early days. But if I see early trends, let me just rephrase that with Budweiser Magnum Whiskey, we see some of that hypothesis play out that the quality credentials, what Magnum means in the bear world, is delivering on the spirits world as well, as far as Magnum Whiskey is concerned. If I talk about Who Garden being, as far as our expectations are concerned, much better than that, it speaks to the idea that our nuance was not off, that a Who Garden bear drinker is willing to experiment on a gin coming through from Who Garden as well. Uh, but we certainly do think that the bear category in terms of action uh, is only getting started. Well, on that note, thank you so much for your time and all the very best for this uh, very ambitious journey that you and AB InBev have taken forth 
in ensuring that uh, you know the India market uh, gets up to speed when we talk about beer, but also upping the quality of alcohol consumption. Oh, thank you uh, very much, Sonali. And uh, not drinking uh, copious amounts of alcohol irresponsibly while you're in advocacy oh, you see, you. uh, efforts. You, you, you picked the words out of my mouth. Uh, we're here. Uh, completely committed to responsible drinking. We're committed to the idea of moderation. It's lovely talking to you, and thank you very much uh, for making the time to have this conversation. So, thanks. Thank you, Karthik.